this old town I'm gonna get to know You better This Christmas And As we trim the tree How much fun It's gonna be Together this Christmas, the fireside is blazing bright. Oh, we're caroling through the night. Oh, this Christmas will be a very special Christmas for me. Step right up. Hey, that's fantastic. Oh, wow. That was a good choice bringing this guy down, I can tell you that. Wow. Hey, thank you very much for coming down from Providence to be with us tonight. Thank you, Santos. Thank you so much, Paul. I love, I, yeah, I, I'm so lost for words, but it's an honor to be here with you. You know, I see your shows. I see you with Chops, and I've always wanted to do this with you. So the fact that I get the honor to do that is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Well, tell me about your background, because I can tell you're a professional. You're really, really a smooth. You really sing well. You write music. I mean, I can tell you're a pro. Yeah. Um, my, I've, been sing, I've been singing since I was, like, five. Like, my father has taught me. You know, Chops will tell you. He's, uh, he grew up with my father, Joe Benton, and uh, he taught me how to control my voice, how to, you know, get the crowd, know what songs to sing at certain events. There was times where he would be like, oh, Yo, you can't be singing that at these certain events. No, <laughs> but he, he definitely he definitely taught me the way and my mother also had a big part of that as well. <laughs> what were you singing that you weren't supposed to uh, <laughs> there, there was times i was singing a little bit of uh you know usher at a certain at a certain event that wasn't supposed to be happening <laughs> there was times there was times when i throw on a little kills and that ain't supposed to happen so you know it, it, there, there was times my father would be like hey man listen you do that again i'm not putting you on no more shows man you get me in trouble <laughs> He's a good guy, but um, yeah, he definitely taught me everything. Every and Chops had a, uh, a hand in that too, you know. Like I looked at him since I was a kid. You know, he's like a father to me as well, and just teaching me all that. 
Yo. Well, yeah. tell me a little bit about your background as far as, you know, family. Do you have other job working on? Uh, you're a full-time singer. What's your background a little bit? So I am an indie artist right now. So I'm still working on my craft, trying to um, get to where I need to be. But as of right now, I'm working on an album um that's coming out next year uh my family <laughs> my <laughs> my family is uh very supportive of me you know they uh they push me very hard with my music uh i do work a job while i'm doing this but you know it's 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 getting to that point where it's starting to be full-time full-time yeah, good for you, good for you. Yes, yes. so is there a certain type of music that you like i mean is there a certain genre that you really like to focus in on r&b R&B, R&B, and a little bit of pop if I can. <laughs> but uh, R&B is like full focus for me right now, and where and where I go, and that's where this Christmas song came from. Because I grew up with my grandmother who was playing all the R&B Christmas songs. Bells will be ringing. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so I've always been a, a fan of that, you know, and and I've always wanted a song like that. So that's where that came about. I can feel that you really, really dug deep for that one. Yes, 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 yes. What about writing music? How do you do that? Are you somebody that likes to sit down and write, or do ideas just come to you? You know what's crazy is I'll be at work. I'll be at work, and I work in a warehouse. So I'll be, I'll, I would work, and and I'm supposed to be doing my job, but in reality, I'm sitting there listening, thinking about music, and I'll write. I'll have a lyric in my head, and I'll pull my phone out and record myself. Like, I'm gonna save that for later and <laughs> keep going. So there's, but there's times when I like to just sit down, you know, mellow out, chill out, and just listen to a beat and just vibe to it. And if it if it grabs me, then I'm there. I'm, I'm the lyrics will come. It only takes like a second for me to to be able to to write a song as long as I'm feeling that beat and I know exactly what I want to talk about. I got to tell you, it's really nice to have you come down from Providence. It's the holiday season, so we're seeing a lot of Christmas songs. We're happy that you're able to perform these Christmas songs. But we'd love to have you come back again and, and do some R&B and get this place jumping even more. I will gladly come back. Thank you so much. I am honored. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Shy Real. We're right back with comedy. You're watching the Paul Santos Live Show. Don't go anywhere.
All right, you're watching the Paul Santos Live Show. We are live from Mikey B's. All right. Once again, say hello to our fantastic, outstanding, amazing director of comedy, Allison Dian. Did you notice that was three positive adjectives we got in there? Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to you and your family. Oh, thank you. Happy Holidays to you as well. And today, actually, would have been my mother's 73rd birthday. Oh, amen. Man. Um, I miss her. Yeah, and she was such a fan of the show, and I know she's happy that I am celebrating her birthday today with you guys. Yes, yeah, true. That's for sure. We love Nadine. And she loved all of you, and I have been thinking about her all day. And last year, I asked her what she wanted for her birthday, and she told me that she wanted me to write her a joke. And I thought that was really sweet, you know, because she really likes my writing and because she knew I couldn't afford to get her an actual present. <laughs> right? She was a good mom like that. So I wrote her a joke, so I'd like to share it all with you. This is a joke I wrote her last year. All right, sounds good to me. Right. And I, uh, so it goes something like, hey, um, I really hate holiday time, especially when you're working in an office and you're four foot nine. Because what happens to you inevitably is someone from HR comes to you and asks you if you wouldn't mind dressing up as an elf. Right? That used to happen to me all the time. Now, on Halloween, they used to ask me if I would dress up as an Oompa Loompa and give out candy. <laughs> and in March, they would ask me to dress up like a leprechaun. And I actually don't mind dressing up as a leprechaun because I think I have a lot in common with leprechauns because, you know, I like wearing green, I like collecting coins, and my body is magically delicious. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. And without skipping a beat, my mom said, that you get from me. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, that's some good stuff. And uh, speaking of some great comedy... Uh, as comedy director, you're always finding these great comics. And this lady that we have right here, she came down from Boston, which we appreciate. Yes, yeah, she is amazing. I'm so happy that Alma is here. You guys are going to love her. Would you put your hands together for the very funny Alma Marfo? I love it. Hi, everybody. Happy Honda Days. Uh, Merry Toyota Thon. I hope you're all making it a December to remember. Uh, yeah, it's I'm excited about the holidays. It's going to be Christmas pretty soon. I'm going home to see family this weekend. And I'm excited because it used to be really stressful to go home because you have all those aunts and uncles and older cousins, family members, family friends who have all these questions about who you're dating and when you're going to have kids. But here's the secret. There are a couple of younger people here. Here's the secret. If you wait long enough, and you don't do anything, they stop asking. It's finally quiet. And, you know, I had some feelings about that. I did. At first, it felt really difficult to go through that because it was like, these are the people that are supposed to believe in me most, and they have just given up. <laughs> but then, I, it was terrible. But then I thought about it a bit more, and I was like, you know what? I haven't given up. Thank you. I am waiting. I'm still waiting. Here's the thing. I grew up in the South, so I've been going to weddings since I was about 19 years old. I'm in my mid-30s now. Round one is wrapping up. Sports fans, I'm a second round draft pick. I'm second wife material. So my time's coming. Thank you. I'm excited about it, too. Uh, listen, we've all had time over the past several years to reflect on who we are and what we're about. And here's what I know about myself. I am romantic, but I'm not naive. I am smart, but I'm the kind of smart that does not mind telling men that they're being stupid, which I'm told is off-putting, but I'm too old to change at this point. And, and I'm, I'm pretty cute when I put it together. Thank you, thank you. But I'm in no danger of getting pursued by like Pete Davidson. I understand what I'm working with, all right? The best way that I describe this to people is I am what you would call a minivan of a human woman. All right? <laughs> Think about that for a second. Most people don't go for minivans as their first vehicle, right? Practically nobody does it. DJs, 
bad drummers and youth pastors are really the only people I can think about that do it. A minivan's the kind of vehicle that comes to meet you when your life needs it, all right? So I am just waiting for the guy that is looking for a girl that is sturdy, dependable, willing to help move a couch if asked. And if there are just a ton of seltzer cans and cracker crumbs in the back, like you don't worry about it because it gets you where you need to go. That's me. That is me all day. Your 1997 Ford Windstar of a woman. Yeah. And my mom wants grandkids, so she's not thrilled about this plan. And actually, a lot of people have asked me about the kids part of it. They're like, if you're someone's second wife, there might be kids in your life. Are you okay with that? And I said, yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, this is New Bedford. You guys will get this. I think about kids a lot like I think about boats. I love going on boats. Invite me on your boat. I will dress for the occasion. I will talk about boat stuff all day. I don't need to own a boat, though. They're so expensive. They dictate where you live, and they are always wet or sticky for some reason. And I'm told it would feel differently when it was my boat, but I don't know. That sounds fake to me. Anyway... I get asked that all the time. They're like, would you be okay if there were kids in your life? And I would. I would. I mean, we like the same snacks. We love the same TV. And crucially to the lifestyle I'm trying to live, I am not interested in manufacturing in-house. You understand? And that to me is just outsourcing. That's outsourcing. Like the auto industry. There's no downside to this plan. So for those of you that are still thinking about what you're going to do, listen, I want you to find your coupes. I want you to find your convertibles. Like your first vehicles are out there. Go get them. I want it. But if you're interested in going another way with it, I've got six more seats. You can get in the back with me. We're going for certified pre-owned, and we feel pretty good about it. So uh, before I go, I did know that it was Allison's mom's birthday, so I'm going to end with a joke about my mom, who is one of my favorite people, but she's also my favorite comedian on the strength of one joke that she told at brunch eight years ago that I'm going to tell you all now. Uh, I took her out in Boston with a couple friends. It's the kind of place where you're trying to impress your mom, but also not impress her so much that she doesn't think she should leave you money before she goes. Like, it's a very tight line to walk. And two of my friends ordered waffle flights. So it's this restaurant that has like a little bit of each waffle, banana nut, berries and cream, chicken and waffles. And they're debating what order to eat them in. My mother is an immigrant from Africa. These are not the questions she's accustomed to answering. So we're talking about the sweet versus savory debate. Sweet first, savory first, what do you do? And at one point my friend Meg goes, well, you just need a handful of pretzels and then three M&Ms. And my mom, for whom English is a second language, got stuck on the three for some reason and was like, why three M&Ms? And Meg goes, oh, because two would be too few and four would be too many. I thought that was the end of the conversation. Like 45 minutes later, we're talking about the end of a show that had just ended. They had their finale. All you need to know about this show, two seasons that were 10 episodes, but the last season was only three episodes. If you're good at math or jokes, don't get ahead of me. So... We're talking about this show. I said, don't get ahead of me. <laughs> and, and Meg is going crazy. She's like, they have 10 episodes normally. And I was like, I know that. And she's like, but this season, they only had three episodes. And I said, I know, I told you that. And she was like, well, why did they only have three episodes? My mom, uninvolved in this part of the conversation, looks up from the end of the table and goes, because two would be too few and four would be too many, Meg. And then just goes back to eating like that wasn't the best thing she could have said. <laughs> So, I know I'm going to call my mom after this, and I will tell her you all said hello. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'm a Mark Fowl, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Oh, that was a great set. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, we got some good information about you. I did. I shared, I shared a lot. I shared a lot with you all. A lot of the stuff I was going to ask, we already learned when you were up here before. Just act like I didn't talk about it. Well, it's great to have you here all the way down from Boston. Really appreciate you stopping by. Tell me about this whole comedy thing. I mean, how did you become such a great comic like you are? So I watched a lot of comedy growing up. Um, I actually worked as a comedy journalist for several years. And then about eight years ago, I had a group of friends that dare me to do stand-up. 
Like they got together and then just sprung it on me and said, we decided you're doing comedy this year. <laughs> so that was eight years ago and jokes on them because now they have to go to so many shows. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's great. So you do a little bit of writing, do you? I do. I do. I'm a writer by trade. So I do a lot of technical writing for startups. Not nearly as funny as this kind of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a muscle I've kind of always wanted to exercise. Yeah, that's she, she writes chops, you know? I wonder if she writes comedy. <laughs> so much comedy. She knows how he's the only so one laughing. So much comedy. He's the only one laughing at that joke. Oh, I need, I need yeah, I mean, we need comedy, right? But anyway, um, how long have you been doing this now? About eight years. Oh, good for you. Good for you. So you're enjoying it. You're traveling around a lot, stuff like that. Yeah, I've always said I'll do this for as long as it's fun. And eight years and counting, it's an expensive hobby, but I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it. <laughs> now, where do you usually play? Uh, all over Boston. Uh, I've done festivals, so I've gotten to travel to New Hampshire, Vermont, did comedy in Canada last year. Uh, we'll probably be going to Texas, but yeah, anywhere they'll have me. How do you come up with your material? Ooh, you know, it's a lot. I have similar experiences where sometimes I'll just be sitting somewhere doing work on something else and a line will come to me and I just have to write it down and then I'll come back to it later. I'll ask friends about it. I'll drop it in conversations. I work out bits on a lot of people. My friends are tired of it, but, <laughs> but they put up with it. So <laughs> oh, good for you. well, uh, in the future, right? Do you have plans that you uh, would like to pursue? Well, I released a uh, half hour of comedy this past winter nice. in February. So working back up to that amount of new material because that was about seven years gone. So I'm starting not quite all over, but pretty well over. So a lot more writing, a lot more performing. See, that's great. Again, we really appreciate you stopping by. You had a yeah. lot of fun stuff. Thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Marfo. Thank you very much for being us with us on the Paul Santos live show. Okay. This is our holiday special and you can't have a holiday special with a lot of special music. And we have, the best band in the land right here with Gary and Artie, and they're going to grace us with some Christmas music. Now, what is on your mind tonight, sir? Um, I, I think um, we'll do a little bit of uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas. Ah, that sounds great. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Artie and the PSL Band. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you very much, Gary Artie and the PSL band. Hey, you know, we can't have a, a Christmas slash New Year's slash holiday special without the big guy coming down, you know? We had somebody come down from Providence, great singer. We had a comic come all the way down from Boston. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, directly from the North Pole, would you please welcome Santa Claus! Oh, Obvi obviously, the only time I get called on is when you're short of people and the guy doesn't show up. <laughs> I really thought, you know, you got the gray beard and all that. You look a little yeah. bit like Santa. You could be. That's why I have a long-term contract. You know, uh, I can't even remember the last time that you called me up here. Boy, there must be a reason. Another sellout crowd. I think you got suspended again. I don't know. I don't even remember what I say anymore. Well, I, I want you to know, uh, you see, I, I, I had a feeling you might pull this on me, so I uh, was something I could talk about. What is that? It's uh, my new Christmas nasty sweaters that used to be popular. You've heard about the elf on the shelf. This is the goof on the roof. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it is Christmas, and despite my depression, my anxiety, and all the medication I take, and living with those people in the nursing home, I still am trying to keep the spirit alive. That's good. Yep, so I made a list of the p things I'm thankful for. That took me about three seconds. <laughs> I'm thankful for funeral insurance at this stage. And I want to thank all of you out there that chipped in. Thank you. I can't afford a natural burial. They're up to $9,000, and they want $48,000 a year for premium, so I can't afford that. I'm paying $400 million a year to the, uh, I talk like Joe Biden, $400 million a year to the nursing homes just to live someplace that I keep getting thrown out of. But anyway, I want you to know I've been writing songs. Gary's been helping me. Do you have any titles that you'd like to share with us tonight? Well, I came up with one. It's called Here Comes Santos. <laughs> oh, no. Here comes Santos. Here comes Santos. Right down Santos Lane. Right down Santos Lane. Right down Santos Lane, balls are ringing, children singing, all that way to go. I get love that I love you, cause Santos comes to town. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. What would you like to say in closing? I'm not yet, I'm not done yet. First of all, I got a message 
We gotta get you. Uh, we gotta get a, 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 some kind of a go go Santos contribution thing because Saunders Funeral Home wants their curtain back. <laughs> now, did you make a list of people to be thankful for? Right? Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, that's great. Thankful. Not so thankful as I get older for my mother and father, but I'm getting to appreciate them more as I get older. I certainly do one thing. I appreciate people in my life that I love, and I have a list. Chops. Chops. All the years. Gary. Adi. Roger Brightman. Lots of great friends, so I had to make a list. Like, I made a list of things I'm thankful, and I made a list of people that I'm thankful for, not you. <laughs> not thankful. You didn't make the list. But you know, one person in your family did. And we, yeah. we joke all year and we play uh, Jesse Santos dad, yes. and his brother Mark. Wow. And I want to say at this time of year, we reach out. We, Paul and I beat the hell out of each other all the time because he knows I'm better than him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll tell you something. I've been working to make this show a lot better for you. You know why? When you switch over to artificial intelligence, it's going to get a lot better. <laughs> and I don't rehearse this. It's just the Prozac. <laughs> and I thought I was going to have a bigger act tonight because I wore my candy cane shorts. But I guess I'm not going to get to go that far tonight. But I want to say at Christmas time to all of the people that come here all the time, and so many of you do, and all of most of the world that doesn't. Allison, God bless you, and a special shout out to your mom. It's her birthday. If she was with us, God bless her. God bless all of us. God bless all of you. God bless all of our families. God bless you, Chops. And you know much is I love you. Your, I love your father. You didn't know my father. He was called Alexander the Grape. The Grape. <laughs> you think you know you know you know how old I am. Alexander ruled the house like got Alexander Conqueror, and he did it with the mentality of a grape. <laughs> Merry Christmas. God bless you, Paul. And I love you and your family and to Andy and everybody. God bless you all. Thank you. Crazy Casey, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we just love that Crazy Casey, don't we? Oh, yeah, we just love him. All right, stand by. We get some great music. We're going to turn it over to Gary and Andy for a moment. And then we have some great music coming up in just a moment right here. You're watching the Paul Santos Live Show, live from Mikey B's. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can't think of a better lead in. You know, we had Crazy Casey up there, and now we're going to change the mood completely. Right? <laughs> I think our next guest is going to get us back on track. I got to tell you, I was scrolling through my news feed, and I came upon our next guest, and I know her because she goes to the same voice coach I do when I first started horsing around with singing, and she's come a long way, and I heard her singing the song, and I thought, wow, this would be great if I could get her to sing the song on our show, on our holiday show. And we were able to get her at the last minute. We really appreciate her coming. Put your hands together for Brie LaFavor. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> Dear Savior, 
Step right up. <laughs> hey, that was a fantastic job. <laughs> you can understand why I wanted you to come on the show and sing that. Is this a song that you've been practicing? Oh, uh, yes. I've been practicing this for a couple weeks now. <laughs> well, I was going through my news feed, and our Vocal coach Sharon Jensen posted you singing again. I was like, oh, I've got to get her on the show to sing this song. Really, really great job. Wasn't that fantastic, folks? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Now, how long have you been singing? I've been singing since the start of COVID. Okay, so not that long, really. Not very long. Probably only a few years, I think. Yeah, and you're 14 now? 13. Ah, almost 14. Yeah. <laughs> and really, so really over these last, say, Four or five years, you've really, uh, really honed the craft a little bit, huh? Yep. I practice a lot. I really, I'm trying to hone in on it. <laughs> Gee, that's great. Now, what school do you go to? I go to the old Rochester Junior High School. Yeah! And you're heading to high school pretty soon? Yes. Now, I know it's early, but do you have any idea what you want to do career-wise? I think I'm going to try to be something in the medical field yeah. or a veterinarian. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, anything in the medical field, whether it's taking care of people or it's taking care of animals or whatever it is, it's really, really important. So that sounds like a great career. Yes, it is. I'm, I love animals. And you do uh, gigs and stuff like that, right? Yes. You really enjoy 
Yes. I really appreciate you stopping by. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and a fantastic job with that song. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. favor. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we started a little late, and we had a slight issue at the beginning, so we're going to end up with an hour show, which is our goal. And we always close it down with my partner in crime over here, and he's going to sing a song to close things down tonight. Would you please welcome a world-class vocalist and entertain? Actually, hang on one second. I, I have another guest before Chop. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, Chops, Chops, you, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I'm just testing the audience to make sure you guys are. No, no, no. There, we have somebody here who has won many, many pageants. In fact, I think it's up to eight now. And she is now, she was Miss Continental the last time we talked to her. Now she's Mrs. North America. Would you please welcome Misty Nordstrom? <laughs> Sorry, I got so many guests tonight, man. I couldn't keep up with them all. I thought you were just, just going to leave me back there behind the curtain. I was like, I guess I can't go to school tomorrow. I just have to stay back there. You know what they call that, a backstage pass? Well, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> Well, well, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. I, I, I just find it amazing because I know the last time you were on, you Miss Continental. And I thought, you know, out of all the pageants that you won, where can you go after Mrs. Continental? And now here you are, Mrs. North America. How did you do it? Well, thank you. You were an inspiration, Paul. I just wanted to keep coming on to the show. And I know that I had to have a title for Paul to invite me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But in, in reality, I think this is my fifth appearance with you. And every time I, I just get so excited and it really helps push me through the long day at school and then come and do this wonderful event with all these great people and huge props to our performers tonight. I'm just blown away with all the talent. So when I was Miss Continental Worldwide, like you, I thought that was really the finale for me. It was an international title that I won in Utah. And I got to do so much international work and I met amazing people from all over the world. And I just thought that was like the perfect finale. And when I came back from Utah in August after crowning my successor, I kind of was a little sad. I was missing the work that and the service that I do and the glamour and all the um, wonderful people that I get to meet from doing all this, you know, work. It's, it's work as a pageant title holder. So when I was asked if I wanted to continue, I thought this is really not what I was expecting. I'm turning 50 in a few months and um, I just never really thought this would be really what my life would entail. But I, I wanted to make a, send a message that women don't really have expiration dates. You know, we can really live out our dreams and I love doing pageants. So why not continue doing something that I love? My dad is 81 years old and he plays golf every day. And no one asks him on the course, like, why are you still doing this? You know, he's still amazing and he's doing what he loves. And I think that's the message to send is no matter how old someone is or what their background is, is we need to keep pursuing what we enjoy and, and not. Yeah. Now, how many titles have you held? Can you like actually list them? I was going to try to do it, but I know I'm going to miss some of them. Okay. So I started as Miss New Bedford in 1995 and then it went to Miss Collegiate Area. Mrs. Massachusetts, Mrs. Rhode Island, Mrs. New England, Miss, oh, Ms. Massachusetts, Ms. Continental Worldwide, and now Mrs. North America. Yeah. So each, each title has come with amazing memories, and I do get to keep the crown, so I have this beautiful collection of all this sparkle. Yeah. And on top of it, you know, each year has really represented a year of service. So I do a lot of work as a title holder, and so each crown represents all that hard work. Fantastic. Fantastic. And in addition to all that, you're an educator. You're a teacher. Yes, yeah, so I was trying to figure out how many years it's been because when you are an educator each day, you just, you're happy you survive. And then it kind of becomes a big blur. But this is my 24th year as a teacher. I, I have... I have a lot of fond memories. I have so many students that I'm still really close to. You know, one of my, you know, many of my former students, but Alyssa Botello, Jordan, um, Jordan Piva, wonderful friend now. I mean, they grow up, they start their own families, their own businesses. And I'm just so proud of so many of my students and the ones that I have in front of me every day, I never know who they're going to become. So it's a huge responsibility. I teach at Keith Middle School and they, my students motivate me to get up every morning and, and, share my my love of knowledge and, and education 
You know, I went to Keith Middle School. I know it was a long time ago, but uh, Chops, I really, <laughs> yeah, about 10 years ago. No, it was back in the uh, back in the 70s. And Chops, I, I really don't remember any pageant winners being my teacher. You know what I'm saying? No, you, you didn't have any? No, I had I had a lady going, hey, oh, there you get to do your homework, you know. Well, I mean, it might be a little strange. I, I can honestly say I went to Holy Family, Holy Name School, and Sister Nathan and Sister Eileen taught me about, you know, how to how to behave. And we we were, you know, it was very strict, a very strict environment. And I have no regrets because I learned a lot about resiliency. And we wore uniforms. There was a lot of discipline. And um, they were pretty tough. I mean, if you survived those nuns, you, you really were equipped to survive the world. But that discipline really taught me a lot. And I think that that was really special for me to experience that. It also really grounded me in my faith. And I'm thankful for that, too. So are you like a no-nonsense kind of teacher? Is that what I'm hearing here? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm... I'm understanding my students, you know, they come from a lot of different backgrounds. They have a lot of challenges. I have had students have terrible things happen to them, lose their parents. They've suffered terrible illnesses and they've really endured a lot. And over the course of the pandemic, I was teaching virtually and in person simultaneously. Um, it was it was a scary time. And I know that the students are still recovering from going through that. So. I am kind of no nonsense. I teach math and science to advanced learners, and we don't have time to waste. But I also like to have fun with my students, and I like to get to know them and, and know that they're all human beings, they're all individual. And I think that they enjoy my class because they're never absent. My students are always there, and they're ready to learn, and they're complimented every day. They do a great job. All right, so now you're. Mrs. North America, right? So are there any pageants after this that you, you could eyeball? Like, is there another one? Like, how much more of the world can we cover here? <laughs> I know, I've covered, covered quite a bit of terrain. But um, each pageant comes with the responsibility of the year of service. And then as the final event, all the queens from around the world, you know, I'm going to represent North America, but we're going to have women from around the globe competing in Orlando over Labor Day weekend next year. So I will be heading there and I'll get to meet some other wonderful women. Like when I went to Mrs. International, I'm still friendly with women that I met from the Ukraine and Japan and Australia. So I literally can go anywhere in the globe and I have a friend that I can visit. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hey. It's really great that you stopped by the Paul Santos live show. I didn't realize that you've been on five times. Is that right? Five times over like three years or so? Yeah, yeah. The virtual version of our show, the uh, the Whaler Inn. Now we're here with Mikey B. So, hey, we really appreciate you coming by. Thank you. It's always so much fun. Thank you. And I really did enjoy tonight. Mrs. North America, Misty Nordstrom. Thank you for being here tonight. All right. All right, Chops. You ready to go now? Now it's time for Chops, right? <laughs> you know, I'm always thinking about chops, you know what I mean? I, I got chops on my brain, you know what I'm saying? Well, chops always has a great song that he sings, and it always fits. It always fits the mood. And, of course, we're in the holiday, so I have a feeling we're going to have a holiday song. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome world-class vocalist and entertainer, Chops Turner! Give it up for the Paul Santos band. I think so too. Bells will be ringing. The glad, glad news. Oh, what a Christmas. Do you have the blues? My baby's gone. To wish me greetings once again. Choirs will be singing silent night, Christmas carols by candlelight. Please come on for Christmas. Please. Christmas, if not for Christmas, by New Year 
this night Friends and relations Send salutations Shook as the stars shine above This is Christmas Yes, Christmas, my dear The time of year to be with the one you love Then won't you tell me you never were wrong Christmas and New Year's I'll find you home There'll be no more sorrow No grief and pain Cause I'll be happy for Santa's happy once again Ooh, No more sorrow No grief and pain Cause I'll be happy once again. Thank you. Hey, Merry Christmas, Jobs. All right. All right, world class. Jobs. All right, this time we'd like to take the opportunity to thank our guests tonight. Oh, we had such a great lineup of guests, and we really, really appreciate it. How about that singer, Shy Real? Oh, he was fantastic. How about Mrs. North America, Misty Nordstrom? How about the young lady who sang Oh, Holy Night, Brila Favor? How about the comedy of Ama Marfo? And our comedy director, Allison Dyan. Thank you very much for being here tonight. And how about that band, Artie Gary and the PSL Band? And, of course, Chops Turner. All right, before we go, I just want to say, you know, we've come a long way with this show. Uh, it started out with me in a room basically by myself interviewing people. And then I had Chops Turner come on as a guest, and I'm like, hey, i got to get this guy on all the time to be kind of like my co-host. He agreed to do it. It was fantastic. Next thing you know, we got Artie on and Gary, Gary and then Artie. Then we decided to add our comedy director, Allison Dyan. We have some great support out there. Crazy Casey, Roger Brightman comes all the time. Nate and Grace Case, Aaron Kaju is out sick tonight. Great support from him. We have uh, Bruce uh, Dewar comes every week along with Mary Ann DeRosa. And uh, let's see, uh, let's, oh, is uh, Rita? Rita's there. There's Rita. We have uh, David Spencer is here tonight. Thank you very much. Mr. Lovegrove, thank you very much for supporting us. Roger Brightman comes all the time. Thank you very much. Shout out to John and Debbie Oliver who come regularly. My wife Ann come support the show. So we really appreciate the support that uh, you give us uh, here on the Paul Santos Live Show. And Chops, we're hoping that uh, 2024 is going to be a big year for us over here with your love and support. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We want to wish you and yours a very, very special, happy and healthy Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and Happy Holidays to you and your 